So, once again, we are at Cassandra Summit in San Jose, and I'm speaking with John Haddad, who has been involved in the project for a decade. Yes. Cassandra Project is 13, 14 years old, mm -hmm. and the world has changed a lot in that time. So, why don't you tell me a little bit about what you've seen changing both within the project and around it in that time? I think one of the definitely one of the, the big areas is in the community. Um, the community has grown by, by an enormous amount and with kind of the change in the community and the evolution of the folks that end up using the project, uh, I'd say what we really see is a massive amount of maturity. So when I got involved, it was right when there was a thrift to CQL transition. We weren't really sure about what was going to, you know, I wasn't even sure what to use. I think I'm the first person to use CQL in production. And, you know, I got I got involved, I started talking about it a lot, meeting a lot of people and hearing about their use cases. And we were in this state where you really had to, like, be willing to roll up your sleeves and be an expert and be kind of ahead of the curve. And over time, the project is focused on improving usability. And in the last like five years, I think the biggest, most impactful change has been uh, a, uh, a move to uh, have it be with correctness. Um, having the database just work better and be more reliable and especially at huge scale, like some of the companies that I've, I've worked at and with in the past, um, it's, it's absolutely amazing to kind of watch the evolution of it, where now we're talking about like all these advanced things that are coming in, like these new uh, types of transactions like Accord that are coming in 5.1, uh, improvements to the way that the, the, way the cluster uh, manages its metadata and ownership of, of data around the ring. Um, just the way you interact with it is a lot easier. The, the administration tools that are there, the fact that you, know, you used to have to know all sorts of cryptic ways to kind of <laughs> do certain things, and now it's just kind of built into all the administration tooling that it's shipped with. So, the project just keeps getting better, and it doesn't sacrifice any of the things that it does really well. Uh, and as someone that's like obsessed with performance and trying to make sure that I can stretch my dollar uh, and help my clients stretch their dollars as long as uh, they possibly can, uh, and keep their clusters up and, and happy and keep their customers happy, uh, it's really, really cool to see kind of the, the evolution of that uh, through 4.0, uh, which I worked on at Apple, um, 4.1, and, and upcoming 5.0 release. Cassandra seems to be really well positioned for the, the new hype around AI ML. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that y'all have seen coming for a long time? Is it, uh, is, is it a surprise? Um, so I, I was kind of a late uh, person to jump on the AI bandwagon and so really in the last few months I've kind of been I've really been kind of ramping up and, and really understanding it more. Um, I think it's a really good fit from the perspective of if you need a, a database where you can put your embeddings and you want to run multiple data centers around the world and get really great performance out of it and, and you already know how to use Cassandra, it's kind of a no-brainer. Because uh, no other database gives you kind of this like perfect match of like scalability options, um, where you can have you know four or five data centers. Like that's a totally reasonable thing to do, and you can have one where it's you know it's it's doing the uh, the embeddings and, and pushing all that data in, and then that just gets replicated around the world, and you know you're super fault tolerant. Uh, it, it's just really really cool to be able to have that kind of flexibility, and then add a new feature like vector search on top of it. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy to, to see that. I wish I could say I was ahead of the curve and, and had pushed for it. Uh, but in this particular case, I, I just recognize it as uh, a really smart move by, by some folks that um, are definitely you know, ahead of the curve. What's the thing in 5.0 that is most interesting to you? Yeah, good question. I think uh, at the end of the day, the thing that I think I'm, I'm personally most excited about is the new storage attached indexes. I've been working quite a bit with the uh, with the folks that have been writing it. Um, I actually had built a uh, stress tool for Cassandra five years ago called TLP Stress when I was at the last pickle, and uh, it's used it's used pretty uh, pretty widely. Um, and so I recently added 
uh, more functionality to be able to do stress testing of SAI, and so I've been benchmarking it. Uh, and I love what we're going to be able to do with regards to flexibility in data modeling and querying. Because I think the biggest pain point that people have with Cassandra is they don't want to write their data two ways, they don't want to write their data three ways. Um, you know, maybe they didn't, maybe they don't know how they want to query it or they want to query it by multiple fields. And in, if you have to store your data ahead of time, you have to know everything in advance. For some use cases, it really just doesn't work. And there's a lot of times where you basically just want to say, hey, I want to grab some of the data out of this partition and filter it by this thing. And by making it hard all these years to do that, I think a lot of users got turned off. So I think that this is going to open up a lot of new use cases for people. Uh, I think that we're going to get, um, you know, like I said, a lot more flexibility and uh, I think a lot more happy users. So there's some stuff that didn't make it into five, and there's going to be a, a five one to get some of that in. Is it what what else is coming in the near future that you're excited about? Yeah, the uh, so the one thing that's really been a struggle, I think, for people over the years, has been the way that you kind of have to carefully hand feed your cluster with regards to uh, the the ownership, um, where your data lives. You have to make sure that, that you don't do certain operations concurrently, or you can kind of risk. Uh, data loss and other weird things. Um, so I think it's really cool that in 5.1 we're going to see a new feature called transactional cluster metadata. That's going to make it a lot more reliable when you're adding and removing nodes into the ring and make it so we can do a lot of these operations uh, concurrently. So a lot of the, every company that I've ever worked with has tooling for Cassandra with all these guardrails in place to make sure that you don't accidentally put your cluster into a bad state. And for us to now have that baked into the project, it's been a long time coming. I know a lot of people want it, and I'm really, really excited to see it. Um, and built on top of that is the new uh, Accord transactional uh, algorithm. And when Paxos came out, uh, everybody was really excited about it, and, and we implemented it in lightweight transactions. And it's cool, like we use it at scale in places, but Accord, takes that and multiplies it by a thousand. It's going to be amazing. We're going to be able to do multi-partition transactions, which is going to be really, really helpful in a whole host of applications. Uh, anyone that deals with financial data gets really scared when they don't have the ability to have a transaction across multiple partitions. I've worked with banks. Uh, I've worked with multiple banks and other financial institutions, and it's one of those things that they are uh, always a little bit nervous about, and rightfully so. And so this is going to solve that problem for them so that they no longer have to kind of build all this manual stuff on top of it uh, and they can worry a little bit less about the data and know that uh, what they want to achieve as an end result is going to be there. Uh, and they don't have to go back and, and you know, be super worried about uh, changes that they wanted to persist may not, that may not have made it in. I think I mentioned a little bit over the life, I've spent uh, 10 years doing this. Um, I have been a committer to the project for the last uh, six years, I think, um, and I had a, I've had a, it's been really amazing. I've got to spend 10 years nonstop working with this technology. I, I originally was at startups, then data stacks. Um, I worked at The Last Pickle doing consulting, Apple, Netflix, and in all these cases I was working in uh, with Cassandra, so hundreds of different teams. Uh, Know, doing performance tuning and, and figuring out what you know how things go wrong and, and figuring out the right way to do things and educate people. So I was really really excited. Uh, nine months ago, uh, I decided to kind of take a, a huge leap in starting my own consulting company, and uh, it's been incredibly rewarding. Like one of the, I was really really lucky to have such a strong network of people that have been referring uh, folks to me mm -hmm. and getting. Uh, getting involved with some of the projects that I've, I've gotten involved with have had real impact on, on the world, and it, it's pretty exciting. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm doing that. Uh, and then other thing that's really exciting is next year I'm going to start uh, doing training. So, oh, cool. the, the, yeah, really, really exciting mm -hmm. the theme is Production Ready Cassandra. Um, there's a lot of folks that, uh, you know, you could learn training from, um, there's a lot of folks with different levels of experience. I think what I bring to the table that's a little bit different 
is my deep experience running Cassandra at the biggest companies in the world, helping people out, being super hands-on, um, and I'm aiming to take that knowledge and share it uh, with my students, and I want to transform people from new Cassandra people to experts, and I really, really want everybody to be successful. And so at the end of the day, my goal is just to help create a new wave of excellent Cassandra operators uh, that are equipped to do the job well and pass on my knowledge of performance tuning and performance analysis so that when they run into problems, uh, they can resolve them quickly uh, because it's one of the most stressful situations people can be in. Uh, is like is an outage and a lot of the times outages are related to performance so being able to do that type of thing um, and having that knowledge uh, I think is gonna I think is gonna be a really good thing for a lot of people so I'm very very excited about that I often say technology is boring it's what people do with it that's exciting tell me a story so um, I can't say uh, a company name but I can tell you that I recently worked on a pretty big bank merger and so getting involved and helping the helping out this team um, where you know a, a lot of customers would notice let's say that like they'd have a hard time bringing up their their mobile app and seeing their bank balances like that's a pretty big deal if you can't get that done yeah. and the result of that is a lot of customers get affected and so whenever there would be uh, an incident which was happening pretty often uh, their, their customers would call and they and they would be mad and so I, I was really, really fortunate, like I said, to, to be brought in uh, and do performance tuning and be able to do the analysis and uh, meet with different people and figure out what they were trying to get out of the system and, and advise them on the right way to use the system and to catch uh, bugs that were causing incorrect information to be shown mm -hmm. uh, to end users. So this is one of those things where it's, it's you know, it, you might not think Cassandra would be used in, in a financial institution because in the back end, you, know, you always hear about eventual consistency, but it can be used and it can be used really well. Um, and I think it, this is kind of one of those huge success uh, cases where um, you know, now they go from being paged all the time to never being paged at all. And they're not getting those calls from their customers. So it's really exciting to me to be able to work on something like that. Uh, and help out a team that previously was kind of a little a little lost and like they were having a really hard time and they, they were really down on Cassandra. Um, they were thinking about moving away and you know come in, fix things and, and make it awesome and everybody is like pumped out of their minds now. So yeah, it was really fun. Well very cool. Thank you for your time. Thanks for for sharing that with us. Yeah, and, thank uh, you Rich. Good luck in the coming year. I appreciate it.